Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I know it's been a little while since my last video, so I do apologize for that. Um, I am planning to try and get into making videos and uploading them a little bit more regularly, so hopefully you guys stick around for that. Now in today's video, we're going to be having a look at how to set up proxy chains using the Tor service. Now disclaimer before we start, of course nothing in this video, nor any other videos that I've made, is intended to be used in any illegal manner. Don't be a bad guy. Now, for those of you who don't know what proxy chains or Tor is, we'll quickly go through a bit of an explanation. Uh, for those of you who do already know, feel free to skip ahead to the start of the tutorial. So, what is a proxy chain and how does it work? Well, let's say you're trying to navigate to youtube.com. So you've got your PC over here, your request goes through your ISP, and then through to youtube.com. YouTube can see that the request is coming from your PC and likewise your ISP can see that you are navigating to youtube.com. Basically what a proxy chain does is it places a set of nodes or proxies in between you and that final destination website or service that you are trying to reach. So let's say this first node is based in the US, the second one is based in Japan, the third one is based in France etc etc and you can have more than this less than this we'll just use three for this example now in the eyes of youtube.com any traffic that it is sending and receiving is coming from this node here in france in the eyes of your isp all traffic that you are sending and receiving is coming from this node in the us so neither youtube nor your isp can actually see the final destination for where this traffic is going to and being sent from and now, obviously, this is great for trying to keep your privacy online. However, there is a bit of a problem. This traffic is not encrypted when it enters or exits these nodes. So, if somebody really wanted to, they could trace out these connections between the nodes and trace it all the way back to you that you are visiting youtube.com. Now, this is where using the Tor service along with proxy chains is going to come into play. Tor works in a similar way However, all the traffic between the Tor nodes is encrypted and anonymized, meaning that these nodes have no way of knowing which whose traffic they are sending or receiving or where the final destination is from both the client and from the server. This therefore negates that problem that we have of potentially having these nodes compromised and your data extracted for them to see where that traffic is really going. All right, now for the good part, setting this all up. Um, now, if you haven't already realized, this is only going to be for Linux machines. As far as I'm aware, there's no way to use proxy chains or any similar program on Windows or Mac. You're basically limited to VPNs or the Tor browser. Um, now, to, make sure, to get this up and running, we're gonna to need to make sure that we have two things installed. Firstly, being proxy chains, and secondly, being the Tor service. Now, depending on what distro of Linux you're running, these may actually be installed already. Distros such as ParadoS or Kali Linux probably will have them installed already. Um, if it's a different distro that doesn't, that's okay. I'll show you now how you can install them. It is quite quick and easy. So we're gonna pop open our terminal and the command we are going to use is sudo apt slash get install dash y proxy chains. It's gonna ask us for our password. Hit that. Um, as we can see, we already have the newest version of proxy chains. Um, if you didn't have it installed, you'll see a little bit more writing as it's going to download those files and install it. Now we're going to run the same command again, but instead of proxy chains, we're going to put Tor on the end. And again, as you can see, we already have that installed. If you didn't, it would have installed it. Um, now, what you're going to need to do next is make sure that the Tor service is started. And this is actually something you're going to need to do each time you start up the PC and want to use, or each time you want to use proxy chains with Tor. So to start up the Tor service, we can type in service space Tor space start, we hit enter. We're gonna to need to punch in our password again and now we want to make sure that it is running this is done by typing in service space tor space status and as we can see here we have got that all running so we are all good to go now the next thing we're going to need to do 
is configure proxy chains. Um, now you're going to need a text editor to do this. As far as I know, all distros of Linux have a built-in text editor. Some of you may have your own that you prefer to use, you find easier. So it doesn't matter what you use as long as it works. So we're going to um, open up our directory that contains this config file. And that is located in etc proxychains.conf. Punch enter. As we can see, that has opened up our file here. So there are a couple different options we're going to want to um, make sure are enabled and disabled. The first being dynamic chain. Um, so as you can see here, we've got three different types. Um, it gives a little bit of a description below each one. Basically, we don't need strict chain or random chain. Those only really come into effect when you're manually inputting what proxies you want to use. Because we're not doing that, we're going to channel them all through the Tor service, which sorts out the proxies on its own. We only need dynamic chain. So we're going to make sure that is not commented out. And we are going to comment out strict chain. Now let's have a look a little bit further down. Um, the other thing we want to change is proxy DNS requests. No leak for DNS data. Um, this is another method that can be used to trace out someone who is using a VPN, is looking at the DNS requests. Um, that can be used, as I said, to trace them out. So we're going to want to make sure that we are sending all of our DNS requests through that proxy, as well as the rest of our data or our traffic. Um, so we're going to make sure that that is enabled. Then we're going to go further down, all the way down the bottom of this config file. This is where we input the proxies we want to use. Um, now, as you can see here, there are a couple of different protocols that can be used. You can use SOX4, SOX5, HTTP. You can actually use HTTPS as well, I believe. Um, now, we're not going to go into the differences between all of these today. Um, that's a topic for another video. The topic we're going to be using is SOX4. Now, by default, this actually has already the correct IP and port here. Um, if it doesn't, that's okay. It's easy enough to enter. Um, we want, I'll remove this so that I can enter it again. So we want to type in SOX4, then tab, then 127.0.0.1. That is our loopback address. Then tab again, and 9050. And that is our port that Tor uses um, to access the Tor service. Um, so once that information is entered, we can go ahead and save and exit. And once this is done, we should be good to go. All right. Again, we're going to want to make sure that our Tor service is running. So we can do that by typing in service space Tor, Tor space status, hit enter, make sure that Tor is running. And once we've done that, we can start using proxy chains. Um, now to do this, you're going to want to prefix, prefix the word proxy chains onto the beginning of whatever program or application you are going to run through terminal. And this can actually be prefixed onto pretty much anything that you use terminal to open up. Um, now, an easy example to show you is Firefox. So we'll type in proxy chains space Firefox. We'll hit enter and we'll see proxy chains start to do its thing. That's opened up a Firefox window. But as we can see here as well, it is pushing all of our traffic through 127.0.0.1, .0 .0 .1, our loopback adapter, and port 9050, which is the port that Tor services use. Um, so we've got our Firefox window open over here. A good website to use to test to make sure um, that, your, uh, that it's all working properly is dnsleaktest.com. So we'll hop onto that. As we can see, stuff's happening here in the background as we're accessing dnsleaktest.com. Um, it's saying that this is my IP, which is incorrect, um, but we can do a proper full test by clicking on extended test. Um, and we'll probably need to give this a little bit of time to run as, it's done, as it does its thing in the background. It's actually quite interesting to watch and see everything bouncing around um, through proxy chains in the terminal. Um, now, something to note as well um, is this is going to be quite slow. Don't expect it to be quick by any means. Due to the nature of how proxy chains and Tor services work, 
um, going through multiple proxies between reach, be before reaching your desired destination and in the same way on the way back it does slow it down quite significantly um, this is one of the disadvantages to using this compared to a VPN VPNs are known to be a lot quicker um, but again this is going to be a lot more secure and private than a VPN Alrighty, that has finished up what it was doing. It took a little bit of time. Um, so we've got two IP addresses down here. One of them, I believe, being the exit node um, before reaching this website, and one of them being our DNS server. Um, so I've gone ahead and looked up these two IP addresses, um, and we'll have a look here and see where they are located. So this first one here, we can see from platinumhost.xyz, um, is actually located in the US. Um, so that's one of our IP addresses and then the other one scroll down funnily enough look at what language the advert is that might give you a clue <laughs> as to what country this um, proxy is located in um, we'll scroll down uh, that is located in France so as we can see um, this hasn't grabbed my true IP address um, all of that internet traffic going from the DNS request through to the actual traffic being sent back and forth from the webs that I'm visiting is all getting channeled um, through proxy chains through the Tor service. As I mentioned earlier, um, proxy chains can be used with quite a wide variety of programs. Pretty much anything that you can run through terminal, you can push through proxy chains. Another good example is Nmap. Um, so we want to run Nmap through proxy chains. We simply open up our terminal, type in proxy chains, nmap, and then let's actually paste in one of the IPs um, that we copied from before, from our DNS leak test. So we'll tap enter. As we can see, proxy chains will start doing its thing, and we'll start doing our nmap scan on that IP address. Anyway, we are not going to let that scan run all the way through because that is taking a little while. Um, I hope you guys enjoy the video. Uh, for most people, a VPN is going to be enough for them to feel safe online. But for someone who is perhaps a little bit more paranoid, proxy chains and or using Tor um, is a great way to ensure that your data is safe online. As I mentioned at the outset, I do really want to try and get back into making videos. So hopefully you guys want to stick around for that. I would like to do uh, more of these technical type videos as I do enjoy making them. So if there's something that you guys enjoy watching, uh, do let me know in the comments below. If there are any topics you would like to see videos on, please do also comment them below. Um, again, thanks very much everyone for watching and I will see you all next time.